Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the DX Gamer Show. My name is Mike, aka Operation DX, and we are once again getting sidetracked for episode 22, not really doing the standard career mode stuff where we would seek out contracts or go and get some more of that uh, great science to unlock some more technologies. No, we are going to start the beginning phases of our interplanetary fuel network. Not exactly sure how far I'm going to take this, but uh, we are going to, at the very minimum, set up something interesting in the local Kerbin system that will allow us to launch some craft a little easier from the system. I think it will. I, and it's just cool. Haven't done the rover thing yet. I should get there, though. I've 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 uh, a couple plans. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. But here is my station core, and it is a proper station core. It's not like what I set up previously to just fulfill those contracts to Kerbin and Minmus. We didn't have a lot of the tech that we have now. We have just some really cool stuff that uh, I haven't played around with before this series, like the fuel cells, and there's all kinds of cool stuff that I really like. I mean, the mining stuff, I mean, that's what I was looking forward to the most. And we are here, so yeah, I'm totally jazzed about setting this stuff up here. So just deploying my solar panels, and actually I got a comment in uh, the previous episode asking me to set up action groups for my craft, which I would absolutely love to do. Um, Unfortunately, we haven't really upgraded the VAB to the point where we can set up a lot of really good custom action groups. Right now, we can use like the abort key and the break key. I mean, I do use the landing gear deployment. I use my lights and all that. So yeah, I don't know. I don't mind so much just kind of doing them individually. It's not like super, super hardcore. There's not a ton of like moving parts and all that. So. I don't know. In, in 2.2, I did all kinds of crazy stuff with action groups. Like, all my science packages firing, were firing off and stuff like that. But it's a lot different here in 1.0. Like, you can't just do that. <laughs> I mean, you can do action groups, of course. But you can't do the stuff like you could do with the science stuff. Anyways, here I was having a little bit of trouble getting a capture on Minmus. And the reason why is because I was being influenced by the moon's gravity. So I keep doing these burns on my maneuver nodes and they were not getting me to where they were supposed to be getting me. So I was getting really, really frustrated. Uh, but mental note, um, for future missions, I always got to pass the moon by and then do my uh, maneuver node setup to get a capture on Minmus. So, lesson learned here. <laughs> I didn't realize it because it wasn't showing me here. It, it was not giving me any indication that the moon was, in fact, influencing my burning, which, of course, made me waste some fuel. However, this wasn't so much of a big problem because I did pack a ton of fuel for these missions that have redundant tanks that... Just in case I couldn't make it, I would be able to have that little extra whatever. Because, I don't know. Like, when I launched that mining vessel, it was 42 tons. I used this, a very similar launcher. And these are much lighter uh, craft. This is just the station core. It's got that uh, processing lab. Like I said, I want to uh, check that thing out and see, like, what's up with it. I have pretty high-level scientist, as you saw when I was uh, packing this craft up. Um, on that last mission, my, my scientist gained a ton of experience for that, uh, Eve Gilly mission. So she is like four star and like, uh, Bob is what he's two or three. So I guess, I don't know, with data, I can get like two science a day, which is actually a lot because these missions take a long time. So like, this Minmus thing here, you know, it's like a couple of days. I mean, it takes me, you know, 10, 12 days to get out here and get all set up and all that. I mean, that's that that'll add up. And if I can just keep doing that with the data and recycling it, 
Holy cow, man. That is a lot of science. But that's not the purpose of the station. That is just one module that I decided to add. But uh, I have the DocuPort Seniors, and I have two planned modules for the station, and I have the craft already built. So I just need to launch them and get them set up. Anyway, I have to do a fairly large plane change here because I was coming in at a slight retrograde position, which I did not want. Fortunately, uh, I'm not doing this around the moon. I could have been due to some great suggestions in earlier videos. I'm doing this around Minmus, which means that plane changes are less severe in the fuel department. 100 plus delta B, delta V, and uh, it's good to go. So now I just kind of want to position my orbit around where the miner is. So I want to make sure that I'm flying right above where the miner is. That way it can launch up and connect with the station without doing anything too drastic. Although I'm going to have to realize that it's on a slight inclination. So it's not exactly going to be a 0, 090 0 lift and uh, line up kind of thing so that's just something i'm gonna have to figure out no big deal now i do have two future modules planned for my station depending on how much time i can get things done in this episode uh you'll definitely see the second module the second module is a resource module which is essentially going to match what i have on the miner right now. So right now the station core has two solar panels, two fuel cells. The resource module has two big solar panels and two fuel cells. It also has that nice top tier ore tank that can hold 1500 ore, which is fantastic. So here I am, I'm finally getting around to using this processing unit. I've been talking about it and talking about it and talking about it. And now I'm finally doing it here. So I fire off these science packages and then they turn into data. And then that data gets converted into science after a period of time. And yeah, this is going to be kind of interesting. And as I expressed earlier, I'm getting like, I'm going to get like two science a day. So not so bad. Anyways, back at the launch center. And I decided to, I guess, do a little bit of cleanup around... My, I was going to leave all this stuff, but I don't know. It was a, it was suggested in the comments again to clean all this stuff up, which I probably should do. There's, It's becoming more and more of a factor that I could run into debris, and although that would be kind of hilarious, and <laughs> it would be an interesting little bump for the series, I decided to go ahead and clean all that stuff up. But anyways, here is my resource module. It is effectively a big orange tank with an ISRU unit. Uh, it's got some RCS there because I need to be able to line that thing up. But it is an unmanned vehicle. The top orange tank is completely empty to lighten up the load. Just to make this you know, a little easier to get up into orbit. Uh, of course, I had to leave the monopropellant in there because I'll need that for docking. And of course, I have that large senior docking port on the top now not all craft are going to use that i did get some smaller docking ports for some smaller craft to be able to dock so there's two of them one on the top one on the side so i can uh, dock stuff up now i'm planning on docking the mining vessel in the same position that i'm going to be docking the lander vehicle which is going to hold the kerbal and they're going to go down and scan for the best spots and stuff so those two are going to have to swap out and share the same docking port because the miner is just too big to use the uh, one on the side because it'll interfere with the solar panels and all that good stuff. But anyways, uh, should be a pretty interesting system. I've also decided to go ahead and use the LVN engines for the landing craft. I'm going to see how that goes because what I want to do, depending on how efficient I can make that thing, I, I, it, it needs to be a small craft, but what I'd like to do is set up a scanning rig on that guy and possibly, possibly send that interplanetary to scan the other planets 
after like I'm kind of done using it for its main purpose, which is to drop flags, find biomes, and find the best resource spots. Um, that's only going to take a couple of missions to do that. And then the craft is essentially, I wouldn't say useless, but it just wouldn't get used as much. I'd like to maintain its functionality. Also, it was not designed to do a curb and return, so that craft is permanent. Another thing is, is because I'm launching all these craft, uh, at least three of them, uh, and like the tanks alone are like a hundred fifty thousand. These craft take I don't know they cost about two hundred thousand credits a piece. So I might have to do a couple missions to make that up. But I'm I'm sitting good right now with the the two million, and I'm kind of stingy right now with my credits as far as upgrading additional buildings in the launch center. Really, really procrastinating on updating. The VAB or the space, the space plane hangar, or, or anything else. The other thing that I probably should upgrade soon is the uh, tracking center or the the radar center, because if I want to do a mission to go grab an asteroid, I think that's something I have to do. Anyway, same kind of thing happened here. Um, relatively approach is almost virtually identical. Slight retrograde. Flipping around, doing a plane change. That's pretty drastic. And uh, <laughs> once again, it's fortunate that it's not around the moon. Otherwise, it'll cost a lot more fuel. So I decided to not do the standard docking maneuver or docking approach maneuver, which, you know, I just do an outer or inner orbit, let it catch up to me or I catch up to it kind of thing. And decided to just do a, um, I forget what Scott Manley called it. <laughs> I'm essentially doing a suicide burn uh, towards it. And um, <laughs> it's really, it's bugging me. I, I forget what he what he called it in his series. <laughs> oh... Anyways, I know that some of you like to see these approaches real time, but it, it takes a long time to get up. And, and sometimes they use time acceleration. I don't know. I kind of enjoy, I mean, I always say this, but I really enjoy this phase of the game. Like my favorite thing to do almost is, is docking in the game. So I don't know. I just find it to be this like really fluid experience and I definitely enjoy it. But here you can see I'm using time acceleration a little bit, um, but we're also using video acceleration on this too, just to kind of speed it up as well. Uh, but I like to slow down the last part, just to kind of show the the fine tuning and maneuvering and stuff. Uh, it's something I do really, really, really enjoy. All right, so doing things a little different here. Usually I would use RCS on final, but I've kind of been doing this thing where I I just burn hard towards the target, just flip the craft around, and then just slow down with the main engine, and then I'll use the RCS to actually like line everything up. So I had to ditch that other fuel tank, and if if you saw like early on when I was uh, setting this craft up, I did that whole thing where I put that fuel line in, which was a good idea because I was able to transfer some extra fuel uh, before I ditched that tank. I don't know, just, just saving a little bit of fuel. And also, I pushed all the fuel forward into the orange tank to balance the craft out because the center of mass was a little wonky. And you know how the craft just kind of sits there and just wobble, 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 wobble. And uh, that's really, really irritating. So... That's why I decided to go ahead, just push all the fuel forward. That way, when I did my final approach to dock, uh, it wasn't going to be like an issue. My craft wouldn't wobble super hard, which, uh, yeah, that, that can be a serious problem. Anyways, this, this docking went almost flawlessly. Uh, really just lined up, and I'm set up here and just made some fine-tuned maneuvers. Um, it's really nice to have that uh, extra little pull when the docking ports get really close to each other and then just uh, turn off the SAS. This wasn't a perfect docking. As you can see, I wasn't lined up perfectly, but that little pull after you turn off the uh, SAS eventually kind of lined the docking ports up and connection and beautiful. 
So uh, the first two are the first module is connected. The main station's up, and um, it's great. So I have a lot of fuel to fill up, a lot of tanks to fill up here. So this is uh, going to be good for future craft. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to add another resource module. I don't know. We'll see how it goes if it needs, like, if I have some, like, super craft up here or whatever. So, yeah, I know that some of you would probably like to see this go on a little bit longer. Me, Doc, an extra craft to the station, no big deal, but... I got a couple other things I'm working on, so unfortunately, we have hit the limit here. That wraps things up for this one. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.